Hi everybody, it's Joe Chaffee on this Sunday, and guess who's here? He uh, knew I was cutting a video, so he came running, right, Kovu? He doesn't like this springtime weather. It's too dreary and too damp and dismal outside. That's exactly what we have today. I mean, what a change from yesterday, uh, where we had areas from central and especially in southern New Jersey that hit record highs above 80 degrees yesterday, including Atlantic City. Uh, upper 70s to around 80 over a large chunk of southeastern Pennsylvania down into Maryland and Delaware. And you can see what happened from last night. That backdoor cold front went all the way down uh, into southern Virginia. So those places today are all in the uh, 70s. I'm sorry, are all in the uh, 40s and 50s. We can uh, find where uh, the boundary line to all this is. And if you look back, if you look out to the west, where the winds are a bit more southwesterly, temperatures are in the 60s. So we're getting this northeast flow coming in from off the ocean, and it's just awful. Water temperatures around are just barely over the 40-degree mark. Temperatures around the, the New York City area are in the upper 30s and low 40s. They've been that way all day long. We've had light rain and drizzle when we haven't had that, uh, which is much of the time. It's just been very gray uh, damp and dismal. Now, this uh, front uh, came up on Friday as a warm front and went up to the north into New England, where, by the way, we have uh, freezing rain advisories going on and winter weather advisories, although it looks like most of the temperatures uh, at the uh, reporting uh, stations in New Hampshire and Vermont are above freezing, but I'm sure there are a lot of cold spots where cold air is getting trapped, and that's why the freezing rain advisories are up. And that extends down even into parts of uh, central Massachusetts, also into northeastern New York. And we've got winter weather advisories for a mixed precipitation throughout much of Maine. So uh, just an ugly day. Really was not a nice weekend for a lot of places from uh, central New Jersey north and northeastward yesterday. A lot of clouds, although at least it was up around 60. But to the south, they had a little taste of late spring. And now you're back in the soup again. So let's look at what's going on on the satellite loop. And we have this storm center that's moving up into the west, into the Great Lakes. And you can see the clouds, how they're kind of spiraling around. And, and you can also see the signature of the cloud cover as it arcs above the Great Lakes and then extends southward, uh, south to eastward across uh, the northern area of the mid-Atlantic states and through uh, much of the northeast. And that's all advancing uh, to the northeast. So you can, you can pretty much pick out. You know, you've got a cold front that's out here. You have the low center there. Uh, you've got this warm front that's kind of hair pinned up. So you're getting some warm air that's moving up to the west. But the cold air uh, is the colder marine air uh, trapped uh, east of the mountains and along the coastline. Also, we'll get to it a little bit later, but there's a gale center that's developing uh, east of the Bahamas, which uh, if this were June would be an interesting phenomena, but it's not. It's uh, March. And that low is going to wind up moving away to the northeast. It's not tropical, but it's it's not you don't see those down there too often. You start to see them a little bit more during the springtime, so you just start to wonder whether you know we're going to see a, a few of those along the way in the next uh, coming weeks. And uh, here's the radar loop, and there's precipitation that's moving through New England, and you can see these arms of showers. Doesn't look like there's any kind of uh, severe weather here today. There are some. Uh, looks like a couple of thunderstorms might be in the mix in eastern Kentucky, but on the whole, uh, the severe weather threat is nothing like how it was on yesterday. So as we look forward, uh, I'm going to start with the European model and take a look at uh, what we're seeing with regards to the overall pattern. So this is uh, right now, and we have um, a pretty active pattern that continues. This This Pacific jet just continues to send weather systems marching along. And the, the, at the same time, the northern part of the jet stream, you know, a little bit of cold air bleeding down into southeastern Canada and New England, but that's about it from that respect. And when we move it along, uh, that system uh, is going to, here we are for Sunday. This is right now. And notice there's a couple of them here. We've got uh, the one that's heading our way at the moment, there's one right behind that, and there's one off the edge of the, the map there that's coming uh, inland. So this says to me that we're going to have a very active pattern going forward. Now, this first system kind of gets lost 
a little bit. Uh, sort of weakens somewhat as it moves northeast. There's the second one, and here's the third one. And this is for Monday. And as we parade it to Tuesday, now we have that second system coming uh, for Tuesday that moves out. And for Wednesday and Thursday of this week, there's a bit of a colder flow that sets up from eastern Canada to bring down some colder, drier air, relatively speaking. But here comes the next uh, weather system moving across uh, southern New Mexico, uh, I'm sorry, uh, eastern New Mexico and into uh, Texas. And that's going to lift up northeast and east and progress across for next weekend. And notice there's one right behind that one. Uh, coming into New Mexico that marches across. This one on the European has a little more punch to it. Uh, now we're into the first week of April. Uh, wants to bring up some kind of gale center up toward the Great Lakes and probably redevelop it, redeveloping it off the uh, New Jersey coast or off the Long Island coastline. Um, that's something for down the road. I'll uh, show you on the GFS so you can take a look at how this plays out at the surface. It's... Um, very active spring pattern. I have to tell you, it's a lot different than last year for the east, uh, where we didn't get a lot of rain throughout much of last spring. And uh, it's good to see that this active pattern is in place because this will give us opportunities for rain and continue to chip away at the long-term drought, which we've kept even with during the winter time and, and the, the uh, above normal snowfall in the northeast, certainly uh, a, a plus. But now we need to see these weather systems coming along every couple of days to put down some much needed rainfall so we get a little bit on monday and then that pulls out and here's the one for tuesday again doesn't look like very much now out in colorado looks like some snow in the offing here boy they by the way they had an amazing uh thing going up uh, situation today i want to punch it up here let me see if that's still the case no but um someone pointed out to me that they had you know record highs uh, with a blizzard watch, uh, regular highs occurring with a blizzard watch all at the same time. So that, that's pretty interesting to see uh, that happen. Uh, that doesn't happen too often. And as we uh, roll it by, you know, this weather system uh, for the middle part of this week brings some snow and rain to Colorado and also through Kansas. Also looks like there could be a severe weather outbreak late this uh, middle of this week on Wednesday in East Texas and Oklahoma, and then extending into Missouri uh, and Missouri and uh, Arkansas and northern Louisiana for Wednesday night into Thursday as that low lifts up to the northeast and then another round of severe weather possible for Mississippi, Alabama into Georgia uh, for later Thursday, Thursday night uh, into Friday. So that low moves on and then another system there's that that next one right behind it uh, does the same thing for next weekend and into early next week. So it's a, it's a really good pattern here from the standpoint of producing, being able to produce some much needed rains. As I said, that's going to be important um, for the long term and as far as the drought is concerned. Um, let's take a look at the uh, upper air on the wide view for North America. And we'll see how the GFS handles all this. You know, you, you get into deeper and deeper in the springtime, you're going to have more and more blocking occurring from time to time. You know, we actually have some blocking here for Monday. Uh, that tries to build into Greenland with a low out in 50 and 50, so it's 50 north, 50 west, right up here. Here's that gale center uh, that's uh, coming out off uh, the floor, off the Bahamas that eventually gets kicked out to the northeast. Now, as we move through time, you know, there's a tendency for this jet to be pretty far to the south, although we don't have any, you know, real blocking developing. But later next week, there's some semblance of it up through here uh, across uh, Greenland and into southeastern Canada. So I think that what that does is that continues to force that Pacific jet, which is unusually strong, to just keep sending in these weather systems riding the flow. The cold air, by the way, is all pinned up in northern Canada at this point. The, you know, what we would consider at this time of year, I guess, to be Arctic cold. Um, that's all pinned up to the north. And there really isn't much of an alleyway <clears throat> for that cold air to move on down. So... There you have it in a nutshell, very active pattern, you know, no major storms to impact us, but a couple of ones that could be productive. And again, those severe weather threats along the way uh, through uh, parts of the southern half of the United States, we need to pay attention to. And I think Kobu approves of all that, don't you, little boy? Yeah, he's such a good little baby boy. Okay, folks, I hope you're having a great Sunday.
And uh, I hope you're going to have a great week ahead. Uh, check out the latest web posts on meteorologistjoechoffee.com. Also, well, you can check out Angry Ben and how he feels about things in the short range and long range on uh, nycweathernow.com. And if you've lasted the 10 minutes of uh, weather talk here, uh, you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. And you can participate in the conversation that it takes place. I do get involved in it all the time. And also, you can uh, subscribe to my channel because then you'll get notifications of new videos and you help me very much with my standing with Google. I really appreciate that. All right, folks, have a great sun the rest of your Sunday, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.